What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today, we will be reacting to a Paul and Morgan video, and bonus, Morgan is actually in this one this time. Uh, the video title is, Could Divorce Be a Good Thing? Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, Emily Ratajkowski. I'm not sure what what their point or what their angle is going to be. I'm assuming they're going to bring up that clip of Emily talking about how, um, I don't remember the exact sentiment, but it was just kind of like, hey, if you're divorced and you're enjoying being single and having your own money and like still being young and hot, that's fine. I think is kind of like the sentiment that was um, in the clip, but I haven't seen it that much, so I'm not exactly sure, but it'll be interesting. Before we actually get into the reaction, there are a few interesting things that have been going on kind of behind the scenes with Paul and Morgan. And I say behind the scenes because it didn't happen on YouTube, so you wouldn't have seen it, but this was all happening on Instagram. This past weekend was their son Luca's first birthday party. Happy birthday to Luca. It looked like Morgan um, went all out and really made it a special day for Luca. She posted about it a lot. She made a balloon arch. She had a petting zoo. It was all very cute. She was definitely happy to celebrate her son. But at the same time, Paul wasn't really posting about the birthday. He did like two stories, one of Morgan making the arch and then one uh, of him and Luca celebrating. Um, but then he was also reposting Instagram stories from his sister-in-law, who is Morgan's sister, Maria. And apparently something, like she got into a scuttle with somebody on TikTok in the comment section talking about Paul and Morgan, and she just felt the need to defend Paul with great fervor. And so she posted on her Instagram stories that Paul loves all people. So in this picture, Paul is standing in the middle and on either side of him, there is Maria's husband who is black. And then on the other side, there is Morgan's brother's wife. And I am not sure what race she is, but uh, she doesn't appear to be white. I could be totally wrong, but just from looking at her, she doesn't appear to be white. And a lot of the things that um, were points of discussion when Maria was defending Paul we're talking about him being racist and so I'm assuming that's why she put this picture up and said Paul loves all people I don't know I don't want to assume what her race is but I did try to go to her Instagram and it is now private along with Morgan's brother's account being private and so I've I've looked at her Instagram before I know it used to be public I don't know at what point it did go private but Maria, Morgan's sister, who was doing the defending, did announce on her Instagram stories that she was going, uh, she was making that account private and then creating a new one for people who actually know her to go and follow her on. So a lot of the attention that she was getting, I guess, just turned out to be too much for her and she didn't feel like dealing with it anymore. So yeah, she posted that story and then she also posted a story of Paul sitting on the couch with his thumbs up looking at the camera and she put, I love Paul. He is a good in-law man and husband. And then Paul shared that to his own stories and put, thank you, sister-in-law with a red heart. So she posted those two stories along with a few others, as well as obviously the TikTok comment section argument that started it all. And it seemed like she spent a lot of her time this weekend defending Paul online and Paul was engaged in it while Morgan spent her weekend focusing on their child's first birthday party. Social media, of course, is only a small fraction of what goes on in everyone's day-to-day -day lives. We don't see everything that's going on. We don't see everything that's happening. Paul could have been totally engaged with planning and setting up this birthday party. I have no idea. But the optics of it just seemed odd to me that, like, this is what you're doing this weekend. Like, this is what you're playing into this weekend while your wife is seemingly putting a lot of time and effort into planning and executing a really happy birthday for your child for the child that she has desperately wanted for years and that you guys have been trying to have for years and this child is finally here and healthy and turning one especially with everything that Morgan went through with the traumatic birth it's just like I can't even believe it's been a year already it seems like it literally seems like it was a few weeks ago that I was reading about what Morgan was going through 
in her birth and and i was like terrified for her so it's just interesting again i can't make any assumption on what things actually looked like in real life but from what was being posted on social media it was just an interesting thing to see anyway time to move on from that and get into today's reaction before we do that though let's go ahead and do win for the week if you are new around here a win for the week is where you share something that happened to you over the past week that was positive that made you happy that made you feel joy that you're grateful for big or small whatever it may be you can leave it in the comment section if you are watching this on youtube or if you are listening to the podcast on spotify you can leave it in the q a for this particular episode my win for the week is that the Arizona Cardinals won yesterday against the Dallas Cowboys. It was so good. It was so good. We lost the first two weeks of the season and everybody was like, everybody was just convinced that the Cowboys were going to win. I wore my Cardinals jersey to church yesterday and um, one of the, I was in the cafe waiting for coffee and somebody walked by me and they were like, oh, you better start praying real hard. And I said, I was like, oh, yeah, why, why? What's up? What's going on? And they were like, they're going up against the Cowboys today. Time to say your prayers. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, okay. Arizonans did not have a lot of faith in the Cardinals. And to be honest, I didn't either. But they ended up pulling out a win. It was amazing. That is my win for the week. And I cannot wait to hear yours and celebrate with you. Now, let's get into this video. If you are married and under the age of 30 and you haven't been divorced yet, you might want to give it a try. It could be a good thing, according to Emily Radajowski. Radajowski. <laughs> also, guys, we're talking the Joe Jonas, Sophia Turner split. And there's also another celebrity couple that, um, the one, the main celebrity in this for, now former marriage, they are no, no longer married. They announced they're divorced. And this... Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is going to make some people really sad because this guy, very well, very beloved, and we'll be talking about that in this video as well. Okay, so right off the bat, we're struggling with names. I'm seeing a pattern that's forming on this channel. Morgan, I get that you might not want to be here. I get that your attitude has shown to us over and over again that you would so much rather be doing pretty much anything else than filming for this channel. However, if you're gonna be here and you're gonna make a video talking about somebody, it might be a good idea to give it the old college try of actually pronouncing their last name correctly. And to be honest, Radikowski is not a name that I find myself saying commonly. I looked it up before I started filming this video because I was like, Emily Radikowski's name is in the title. I need to learn a, an appropriate way to pronounce this. And the internet said that it's Radikowski. So that's what we're going with. Morgan could maybe try calling her that before jumping to Rada Jacuzzi. And then Paul is also calling, I don't know if he's going to do it throughout the video, uh, but he called Sophie Turner, Sophia Turner. Let's hope that this is not an issue throughout and he just said it incorrectly the one time. Ba, ba, ba. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. So, Morgan, okay. let's just dive right in. You I, I, were you as okay? I don't want to say that I was shocked mm -hmm. when I saw that Joe Jonas and Sophie <sighs> Turner were getting a divorce. Okay, but Sophie. it always stings a little bit more when the marriage came and went so quickly. I know four years is nothing. Yeah, I wasn't shocked. I don't think we can ever be shocked when it comes to celebrities and the things that they do anymore these days. It's just all just kind of like the norm to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I was sad. I was sad. And I'm not going to lie. I got kind of wrapped up in the like PR stuff that was going down against Sophie and like the people trying to make her look like she's a bad mom or she just wants to go party and live her life. I very quickly was corrected and was like, I'm not going to get okay. caught up in this garbage. Well, it's not necessarily. <laughs> okay. I'm glad she addressed that because she did post onto her Instagram stories, a picture of Sophie out at a bar drinking. And so she said something along the lines of like, how sad is it that this is what someone's priority is these days when you should be, you know, with your kids being a mom. It was something along those lines. If I can find a screenshot of it, I will put it in the video. But 
seeing that, I was like, oh my gosh, you don't even know what's going on. We don't know the backstory behind that. From what I saw, it was a cast rap party. And then people were like, oh, well, she should still be with her kids. And then at one point, Joe Jonas was like, she just wanted to stay in. She wouldn't go into the events that she needed to go to and be there to support me. And then on the other hand, it was like, I want her to stay at home and be a mom. It was conflicting stories from Joe. And maybe she was at a cast rap party. Or maybe she was out at a bar with her friends. I don't know. But I think it's kind of ridiculous to take a picture of somebody going out for one night and having a few drinks and being like, this is really sad. So I'm glad that Morgan um, is saying, yep, I got caught up in it. But I had to pull myself back. It's a little bit of accountability, I guess. Like not getting caught up because perhaps some of those details can be relevant. But yeah. to my knowledge, from looking more into it, it's just like there's so much speculation. We are going to read um, the official statement by Joe Jonas. And I believe Sophie Turner posted that to her Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Did she? Uh, I have no idea. Well, he said this is the statement from both of us. But I got to say real quick before I do and we really dive into this thing and the topic of divorce, I I guess, kind of like you already mentioned, I was hopeful. I saw that, okay, Kevin, the hey, for any of the Jonas Brothers fans out there, I am a former pretty big Jonas Brothers fan. Me too. You as well. Yes. I was a Joe guy. You were Not a surprising. Nick guy. Yes. <laughs> Kevin, I, there are... <laughs> we love Kevin. Kevin, you're, you're hanging there, bubs. We love you too. We love you too. Um, but... When I saw, I'm not as big a fan of their newer music. Obviously, their lives do not reflect the gospel. They don't reflect Christ. Maybe Kevin, but not so much Nick and Joe. Nevertheless, when I see them all getting married, Kevin gets married, and then uh, Nick gets married, Joe gets married. They do the happy. I watched the Happiness mm -hmm. Begins documentary, mm -hmm. and their wives were coming with them on tour. It just looked like one big happy, awesome time. Good. And now it is splintering <sighs> and it, 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 it's, you know, it stinks. But as you said at the beginning, and we're going to get to uh, Emily Redajowski's post, mm -hmm. could divorce be a good thing for these specific circumstances? Pull up, Morgan, this, the official statement by Joe and Sophie. All right. Statement from the two of us. After four wonderful years of marriage, we have mutually decided to amicably end our marriage. There are many speculative narratives as to why, but truly this is a united decision and we sincerely hope that everyone can respect our wishes for privacy for us and our children. Yeah, I mean, Morgan, I always find it interesting. And obviously with these celebrities, you got the PR teams, you got the... Mm -hmm. There's typically more to it. Yeah, people telling you what to say or how to say it. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, but I just think it's baloney. Four wonder wonderful years? Then why are you getting a divorce? They clearly weren't wonderful. Well, that's the thing, though, is is one thing you got to bring to the table. Even if they weren't wonderful, Morgan and I, and I can contest our first year, our first two years, Okay, before they get into that, obviously this is a curated PR statement. Obviously there is more going on behind the scenes, but honestly, we are not entitled to know those things that are going on behind the scenes. They don't even have to tell us that they're getting divorced, but you know, people speculate. Obviously at some point it's going to come out and it did seem like for a while Joe was trying to kind of spin the narrative to kind of come out on top and it seems like maybe he's pulling back from that a little bit. In any case, of course, there's more going on behind the scenes. We don't need to know what that is, though. Also, I'm just curious why they're talking about divorce in this way. Logically, I'm sure it's because it is a hot topic and they think that they're going to get a good amount of views by talking about something that's currently going on in the world of pop culture. But at the same time, if the whole point of their channel is to help people be in the world but of the word, why are we talking about how, like, they're not really Christian figures and it's just disappointing and here's their PR statement. Like that doesn't really have anything to do necessarily with Christianity. If if Joe or Sophie um, or the couple that they're going to bring up later, maybe I don't know who that couple is, but let's just stick with Joe and Sophie for now. If they were like 
big religious influencers or well-known pastors or if they were part of, you know, like how um, they talk about like Stephen Furtick, if if these people were part of a mega church or part of like Elevation Worship, Bethel, Maverick City, I could understand talking about one of them getting a divorce because that would be like a current event that's related to the general concept of your channel. But somebody who's just a cele- like a couple that's it's just a celebrity couple. They're not religious influencers. They're not religious leaders. They're not like well-known figures in Christianity. Yeah, I mean, for a while it seemed like they were doing like the whole uh, the purity rings and purity culture thing with Joe, Kevin, and Nick when they were younger. But it's been a long time since since that era of their public personas. So I'm just not sure how this fits and where exactly they're going to go with the video. Really hard. Really hard. And we still have hard times. You guys were on the, <laughs> the live stream on uh, on Friday. Yeah. We got into an argument live and it got kind of awkward to be completely honest. Love you guys oh, for yikes. those of you who came back and continue to watch us. Thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. It's not easy. They got into a fight on a live. I might... We might have to go back and check that out. Easy. And no one's claiming it to be easy, but it, it just, fe- I agree with you, Morgan. It just feels like you're really going to start your statement of divorce with after four wonderful years of marriage. That just sounds weird. That really does rub me the wrong way. It's really, really strange. And let me just say, like, we're not expecting Joe and Sophie to, like, respond how a Christian would respond because I don't know if they would, either of them would say that they're believers or walking with the Lord. Like, I don't think that that's a thing. So it's not like we're like, guys, do the Christian thing. Like, that's not it. But I think it's good to talk about this type of stuff. You know, what's funny is I'm pretty confident the last person, the celebrity that we're going to get to at the end of this video he does say he's a Christian. Really? Yeah, I, I believe so. Who? Um, and it's it's not uncommon. I mean, I, I think all of us no, watching now uncommon. would be able to say, oh yeah, like well, here's here's my well, cr- Christians in my church, Christian family well, that. Right, and that's exactly why I'm saying it's good to talk about this before you cut me off, sir. Well, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, but I think it's good to talk about this because as Christians. In the world, but of the word, we're seeing hey. so many people <laughs> in our church, in our families, our own parents, our own friends, um, people who got married around the same time as we got married, getting divorces. And for reasons that... <laughs> Bless you, by Minnesota. <laughs> what? For reasons that are not biblically acceptable. But, Morgan, but... So what does that have to do with Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner if you just said that you don't know if they would consider themselves believers? That's that's the thing. Also, I just want to know why Paul and Morgan consistently bring up how tough their marriage is and how, like, difficult, especially the first two years were. Like, I want to know more about that. They bring it up a lot, but I can't say that I've ever heard them talk about, like, specifically what what was going on, like, what they were experiencing that made it so difficult for them. Because when you just say, like, marriage is really hard and it's still hard and we still get in fights, I think maybe they're trying to be, like, honest and relatable and say like see not like just because we have a christian marriage doesn't mean it's going to be perfect you have to work through stuff but it just makes it sound like they're ill-matched and it makes it sound like they don't really uh enjoy like being in this relationship because they're consistently just vaguely talking about how difficult things are that rubs me the wrong way much like joe and sophie's statement rubbed paul and morgan the wrong way but (laughs) <laughs> when we look at some of these divorces yeah could it be good even if it's even if maybe there isn't <laughs> specific biblical precedence could it be i oh, and we're, we're really about really want to keep our viewers on the we are we're, we're about to talk about that but yes morgan <laughs> blank blank his first and last name uh says i'm a christian in interview and i, I feel like i've heard that um, before but all right morgan um let's get to- <laughs> blank blank Let's get to 
Um, Emily, we're, we're going to kind of tie all this together. Let's get to Emily Ratajowski, this post that she made that kind of blew up in, in her specific statement. Before we do, you guys, I um, just want to say shout out to our patrons. Seriously, as I just think about like what an intense kind of uh, ebbs and flows, up and downs of being YouTubers to have the security of Patreon supporting what we do on this channel is huge. So if you guys want to become a patron and support us and support us helping people be in the world of the word, become a patron. Patron only Zoom calls, weekly Patreon, Patreon encouragement videos, 30% uh, off our brand new merch that I'm not wearing, but you should get some Whoa. seriously okay. and more become a patron. The link is below. So, all right, Emily Ratajowski. <sighs> I'll just, I'll read it because uh, it's the, what you sent me earlier today, the way they were describing the post, I guess she posted it to TikTok maybe. Yeah. It said she was like. I don't even know. I was like, that's so confusing. I'm not even going to let well, that go through my mind. Yeah. It just the, the way that, I don't know. She was like in her bed. Uh, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. But she's a, a pretty popular can, actress model pretty yeah very very pretty woman she says this in a recent post she says so it seems that a lot of ladies are getting divorced before they turn 30 and as someone who got married at 26 has been separated for a little over a year 32 i have to tell you i don't think there's anything better if being in your 20s is the trenches there is nothing better than being in your 30s still being hot that's really funny. Maybe having a little bit of your own money, figuring out what you want to do with your life, everything, and having tried that married fantasy, I love this, having tried that married fantasy and realizing that, that it is maybe not all it's crack up to be, cracked up to be, I don't know why I can't speak. <laughs> do, is, is that a thing, Morgan? Like, oh. do you hear, <laughs> maybe, maybe celebrities hear something different. I never heard that being married was, was a, a fantasy, fantasy, all that it's cracked up to be heaven on earth. I heard it was going to be hard, these, but is that something that people are hearing? I think these actors are <laughs> acting out these fantasy marriages and movies and that could be something and whatnot. And then they think like actual real life marriage is going to be just. No, I think she is referring to like the marriage fantasy of not people saying that marriage is a fantasy, but of that being sort of like the expectation or the goalpost of once you become an adult, it's you grow up, move out, you know, get your education, get a job, whatever, and you find love, you get married, you have kids. That's something that is kind of like a goal for a lot of people. That's something that is an accomplishment is getting married and having a family of your own. And so that's something that's kind of common in secular culture as well as Christian culture. I mean, with the Christian culture, depending on the sect that you're in, it might not be to move out, get an education, get a job, but you do still have that goal of getting married and starting a family. So it's not necessarily her saying that people told her that being married was going to be a perfect fantasy, but it's part of like the fantasy of what you should want for your life, of what it looks like when you're accomplished in your life. That's how I take it. And obviously, we're going to hear the rest of Paul and Morgan's take on her statement. I'll just say for me, I don't agree with everything she said, but I get the intent behind it. And I especially get it if you um, are somebody who went into a marriage at a really young age because you thought that that was the next step or because you thought like that's what's expected. And that marriage was not a healthy thing for you. I don't know all the details of Emily's former marriage, but it seems like they got divorced because there were rumors that he was cheating on her. And so just based on that, it's safe to say that maybe that wasn't the healthiest, most trusting and loving environment for Emily to be in. And so for her personal experience, for her to have that marriage and to get out and to be an adult with her own money who can make her own decisions, for her to be like, 
I can really figure out what I want now. This is so much better. My 20s were the trenches because of the environment that I was in, and this is amazing for me. I get where she's coming from. I get why she would say that. I think she's just speaking from her experience. I don't think what she's saying is applicable to everyone. I don't think that there is nothing better than having been married in your 20s and now being divorced and um, still young and having your own money and all of that because that's not my experience. I am married and in my 20s and I would like to uh, stay married. I would very much like to keep it that way. So obviously that doesn't apply to me, but I can understand why she would say that and where she would be coming from when she says it. It's like that cute and perfect and romantic. And then what do you know? It's literally not at all like that. Yeah. Well, she says it's realizing it's not all it's cracked up to be. And then you got your whole life still ahead of you. Um, So for all those people who are stressed or feeling stressed about that, about being divorced, like it's, it's good. Congratulations. Congratulations. And then the article that we're reading says, Radajowski then captioned the video, personally, I find it chic to be divorced by the age of 30. (sighs) What an incredibly dangerous dangerous perspective and mindset and she's not the only celebrity that's recently woman celebrity that's recently come out and talked about getting a divorce and how amazing they feel to be divorced liberated yeah i'm back in total control of my life there was another woman like comedian she came out and said she's been divorced twice and she's 30 something and like how amazing it's been right in the live chat if you guys know who morgan's talking about yeah i can't remember i meant to look that up but um yeah, guys, this is tragic, and it is interesting because she says this marriage fantasy, if you want to try that out for a little while, realize it's not as great as it's chalked up to be, end it, move on, good for you. You're still hot. You can still get a man if you want that, or you can go make money. I'm just like, let's just like look look at what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say that marriage is a fantasy. The Bible talks about when you become one daily, you're laying your life down for one another. Daily, you're dying to yourself. <laughs> like, let's talk about a fantasy. <laughs> daily, <laughs> Paul is leading his family, our family, and loving us as Christ loved the church, which is to die. Wow, babe. That's high praise right there. I'm not saying you're perfect. <laughs> oh, I thought you, in your statement, it sounded like I was I was crushing it. You're doing great, babe. Come here, you. Oh my God, I'm so uncomfy, but I just need to interject. It's ridiculous for Morgan to be like, that's such a dangerous message for her to put out there that she's like liberated now that she's divorced because maybe she is liberated. Maybe that's the truth. Maybe getting divorced was the best choice for her life, for her happiness, for her personal growth, for everything. You don't know what happened in their marriage. You don't know how she was treated. You don't know the dynamics. You don't know if her partner at the time was willing to work on whatever issues they were having and be a healthy husband to her. Like you just don't know those things. And so for you to like downplay that this might be the best choice for her and to like make fun of it is kind of wild to me. And then additionally, you can't hold the world to the standard of your personal religion. That's not how it works, especially in America where we have freedom of religion and we have the right to choose whether we want to have a religion at all and if we do, which one we want to follow. And so for Morgan to say like, that's not what marriage is. The Bible says to do this. Okay, that's great. And that should be your standard for you and your marriage, but you don't get to impose your beliefs on someone else just because you think they're right. And I'm saying this as a fellow Christian. As a Christian, I don't get to say like, hmm, my belief system says this and you're doing this instead. So you're wrong and I'm going to tell you that you're wrong and I'm going to judge you for being wrong and you need to do what my belief system says. You need to do what I'm telling you to do. That's not okay. That's not how this world works. And it's not right, again, to impose a choice that you have made for yourself on someone else who did not make that choice. Not cool. And I I don't want to press play because this is so uncomfortable. 
<laughs> Daily. Can you forgive me for our argument last week? <laughs> yes. All right, give this video a thumbs up, you guys. Just, you all know. <laughs> just give it a thumbs up. <laughs> for marriage. <laughs> and, for, and forgiveness. <laughs> ah. I forgive you too. Thank you, Polly. I did ask for forgiveness, guys, <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> oh, you didn't need to do that multiple no, times. No, I didn't. And you forgave me multiple times. <laughs> we, we both. We both. Yes. Continue. But, but the Bible, you know, daily as a woman who is following what the scripture says, I am laying my life down to be led by an imperfect man who fixes his eyes on Jesus. That's not easy. It's not a fantasy and this idea that marriage is a fantasy christians if you're believing that just let me just <laughs> break that for you it's not a fantasy it's a good place to start <laughs> yeah but it's absolutely beautiful it's so powerful marriage is so powerful and it makes us look more and more like christ daily if we allow that and that is the goal to become more like christ each day that we live and praise god that marriage does that singleness does that all, all, all ways of life do that if we allow Christ, but we're talking about marriage specifically. And we're about to play this uh, little video that Morgan found. Um, it's a very short video, but I saw someone in the live chat say, like, I got divorced in my 20s. My wife cheated on me. And uh, again, going back to scripture, if you look at it, and some people kind of will say, well, but there's this verse that you got to take into consideration. Fine. I'm simply looking at what Jesus said when he said, unless... You know, unless for adultery, mm -hmm. if you divorce your spouse and then they remarry, you are causing them to be an adulterer. He's, he's, Jesus seems to make it very clear from my reading of the text that anything other than adultery um, yeah. is sin. Yeah, we're not claiming to be ex. I disagree with that. And there is biblical scripture to back up disagreeing with that. Um, adultery is not the only, it's not the only reason to divorce. And I think it's highly irresponsible just on a, like, not even on a religious level, on a human level to tell your followers who I guarantee you are younger than you are. Um, and like, they look up to you and they're looking to you for guidance to tell them that the only reason for divorce is if you get cheated on. And plus, Hey, weren't those the rumors? Like, isn't that why Emily Ratajkowski got a divorce allegedly because there were rumors of her husband cheating on her? And I haven't seen um, her come out and say that it was for a different reason. I don't keep up with her, so maybe I'm missing something. But wouldn't wouldn't that qualify if if that were the case? If that were true, wouldn't it qualify that that would fall under a biblical divorce? In your perspective it's so interesting that paul is going to say like i'm i'm relying on jesus's word for this and that's the only thing i'm going to take when it comes to a reason for a biblical divorce and yet for so many other things like in um any conversations that they have generally about purity culture they do reference first corinthians and in first corinthians which is a book um, in the bible written by paul not this Paul, another Paul, um, Paul the Apostle, he does say that if somebody is married to someone who is an unbeliever, they should stay married to them. But if the unbeliever wants to leave, they should let them go. And so when it comes to, um, and I know that's not like justifying a divorce between two Christians, but it's just the first verse that popped into my head because I have read 1 Corinthians a lot. Um, it's just funny that they use Paul's words to justify their stances on purity culture and, in my opinion, take certain verses out of context in order to shame people. Like, Paul's words are good enough for them when it comes to their views on sex before marriage, but it's not good enough when it comes to any other sort of justification for a divorce. Like they're not even willing to look at any other books in the Bible for some guidance on when a, when a divorce might be appropriate. Also, I think it's important to acknowledge the context of what a marriage would have looked like at the time that Jesus would have said that. Uh, throughout the Old Testament, um, religious figures who we are meant to look up to 
have multiple wives. They have multiple wives. They have concubines. They are not in monogamous marriages. And so that's just something that we see all throughout the Old Testament. And then the idea of Jesus coming to earth is to create a new religion, one where you follow um, Jesus's teachings, basically. And this is how we get Christianity. And so a lot of what Jesus is doing on earth is saying like, here are new rules to abide by. Here is what you should do. Here are the things that I am saying are appropriate. And here are the things that my father in heaven are wanting you to follow. And then when we have uh, the letters after Jesus is crucified and returns to heaven, like letters to the Romans, first and second Corinthians, so on and so forth, those letters to new Christian churches that are being formed, those are instructions on how people are to behave now that they are Christians because this whole Christianity thing, it's new. It's not something that's been established for thousands and thousands of years. So two kind of important points to bring up. The verse that Paul is talking about, this Paul, is uh, Matthew 5, starting at around verse 31. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And Kind of the theme of the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus saying, you've heard this commandment, but I say this. And so it's not a contradictory statement. It's this is the commandment that you've heard. And now I'm going to amp it up to this. And so again, let's think about cheating concubines, having multiple wives, etc. things that happened all throughout the Bible. And so in this verse, Jesus says, you have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. And we can, we can take that literally like Paul and Morgan are, and I'm not telling anybody how to interpret that verse in the Bible because I'm not a religious scholar. But when you think about it within the context that we've just laid out, it's kind of like, a okay, we're, we're amping it up because before you could just get a notice of divorce, you got the paperwork, you're done, you're good to go. But let's amp it up. Let's talk about how I, how dedicated and how committed I actually want you to be to each other. And this is how I'm going to phrase it. I feel like him phrasing it that way is just kind of like upping the ante for people who want to be Christians and like raising the stakes for them saying like, this is how serious I want you to take your marriages. And I feel like this is kind of further supported by an interaction that happens later in that same book of the Bible, um, where the Pharisees who are religious leaders at the time and do not like Jesus come up to him and they're kind of trying to like test him on when a divorce is okay. And so they say like, don't you think divorce should be okay for any reason? And Jesus asks them what the scriptures say. And they reference that Moses in the old Testament was okay with marriage. He was like, all you have to do is get like a decree of divorce and send the wife on her way. Like, and that's, that's when it was okay. That's when you could get a divorce as if you had the proper paperwork basically. And Jesus essentially says like, yeah, that, that happened under the law of Moses, but that was only a concession. That wasn't what God intended. God didn't want it like that. This is, this is how we're doing it now. Basically, like if you're following me, this is how we are doing it now, where unless there's a case of adultery, and if you get divorced, you are then committing adultery by divorcing somebody and marrying someone else. And so later in the chapter, um, the disciples, people who are following Jesus very closely, were like, that seems like a tall ask. What's the point of even getting married? And Jesus says like, yep, that's the point. Like it's a big commitment. And if you are not up for that task, don't get married. So Yes, in that conversation as well, Jesus does specifically mention that it would be considered adultery to get divorced and to be with someone else um, for any reason other than adultery. That same idea is presented. And if you want to take it literally, that's fine. Like You can interpret the Bible however you want. But I think just considering the context, I am open to a more broad interpretation of the scripture. I am also open to um, what other verses tell us about divorce and when it would be okay. And I also just 
purely from my personal belief, um, they, they're they saying adultery is the only reason. They don't mention any sort of abuse, whether that be financial, physical, or emotional. And if I'm going to be honest, I don't think the God that I know would want anyone to be in an abusive relationship. And so even though that wasn't the example that Jesus specifically used from the text that we have um, after hundreds, if not thousands of years of interpretation after interpretation and translation after translation, I would consider that to be a justifiable reason if you are a Christian for getting divorced. Words on the scriptures when it comes to divorce, we're not saying we know exactly what is, but yeah, just from what Jesus said right there in that verse, it makes it very seem like the reasoning for divorce is very small. It seems very small. Yeah, we're not going to get into the abuse stuff. That's that's a big topic that many can um, discuss and debate. There's the whole topic of separation versus divorce. You know, separation can be a very healthy thing. Not You don't necessarily need to take it to divorce, separate, see how that goes that time period. There are things to discuss, but it's according to Jesus right there. And so... Oh, okay. So... That kind of left me speechless. I didn't even think that they were going to bring up the topic of abuse because I I would assume that they would have had to have been like, yeah, and yes, if you are being abused, that is not a healthy environment for you. You do not deserve to be subjected to that. Get out, like safely get out, do what you can. Even in my church that I go to and talking about divorce, every single time that concept is brought up, because they do talk about like being dedicated and staying with your spouse and like working through hard times. But every single time it's brought up, they also say, but if you are being abused, that is not a biblical marriage. That is not a healthy place for you to be in. And you, you have permission to leave. You need to leave. And so like for Paul to just say, yep, there's a conversation to be had about abuse, but we're not going to have it and not denounce abuse, not 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 affirm that it's okay to leave if you are being abused. <sighs> I'm feeling a, a wide range of emotions right now, and I can't quite pin down which one's coming through most strong. Someone who would say, well, I did get divorced. Oh my goodness, this internet guy will not leave us alone. <laughs> he won't, this internet guy. Um, divorce is a we're just gonna keep talking sorry bubs hey we are literally live right now you got to be able to respect it respect the game is he looking at you he's he's kind of oh that's so awkward <laughs> um <laughs> can you guys hear the knocking so, this is, uh, yes it is what it is um but if your spouse leaves you and and you know starts having sex with another person uh, adultery then you are biblically permitted to get remarried yeah. All right, but let's keep going. Morgan, let's go ahead and play this video that we uh, that we referred to. Check this out, guys. One out of every two marriages, 50% of yeah. people get divorced. Where? I don't. In the United States of America. It does not exist anywhere else. It exists, but not the way it exists here. It's so easy. They have an argument. Yeah. Let's get divorced. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Work it out. They split. We That's did it. work out for 65 years. No regrets? No regret. No regret. No regret. If you have an argument, work it out. <laughs> I some kind of like... The uh, despicable me. <laughs> no, seriously, awesome. I love that. Old people sometimes they just they rip off the band aid and they say what needs to be said. Yeah, and you know a lot of people want to come back and be like, you don't know why people get divorced, and that's true. We don't totally know why. We don't know why Sophie and Joe. We don't know why blah 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 got divorced. But statistically speaking. The number one reason for divorce in America is lack of commitment. 75% of people get a divorce because they're not committed. It says, lack of commitment is the most common reason for divorce. Marriage is not always easy. 
So success requires both spouses to be dedicated to their union and serious about making it last. That's why it is not surprising that a lack of commitment could spell disaster for a couple. Well, and I hear, and even in the pre-live chat, Morgan, I glanced at that and saw a couple people saying like, yeah, you know, divorce isn't. I need to know where that's from. I was looking in their description box just now, and it's, it's not linked. I don't know what article or study they're quoting from, but I would love to see it. I'd love to check it out. Something to be celebrated, but sometimes it's just not working out. Sometimes these two people are just not working together. It's not an excuse. I'm sorry, but it's not, especially if you're a Christian. Life is not perfect. Things don't always go our way. And a lot of times the person you marry is not the same person 10 years down the road. And so hopefully through those 10 years that you've been together, you guys have not grown this way. You've grown this way together. Like we, I've grown up so much since getting married to Paul. So has he. We've grown together and separately. We have to remember, you can grow separately, but you also have to grow together. Morgan, did I, I'm trying to remember, I literally, I think I made a reminder on my phone, praise Morgan for the <laughs> maturity that she's had in our marriage. Something along those lines. Did I, did I praise you? Did I, did I bring it up though seriously? I was thinking the other day, and this isn't to make it sound like whatever. Take it how you want, you guys. But I was literally like, from first year, first months of our marriage to now, Morgan has grown so much. But and and hopefully she would say something similar with me. But no matter what, you may be married to a spouse that sadly isn't growing. Mm -hmm. Is not growing at the rate that you think they should. Maybe they've just embraced some selfishness in your marriage, and it's flipping hard. Yeah. Well, the Bible kind of talks about that as well. The Apostle Paul saying, if you literally have an unbelieving spouse that's not even a Christian, mm -hmm. show them Christ through the way that you live and love them. Yeah. He, he doesn't give a way out because of that. What's the point of having a reminder to give Morgan a compliment if you're not even going to follow through with giving her that compliment? Initially, when I heard like, oh, I think I put a reminder in my phone to like praise you for that, my I was like, it. Ew, what? What do you mean you what do you mean you need a reminder to praise your wife? But I did recently read a, a post on Reddit where this guy had said that he puts reminders in his phone of things that are going on in his wife's life so he can remember to bring them up and ask her about it. And he's like, it's not that I don't care. It's just that like my brain doesn't work that way. Like whenever she tells me something and I think it's important to remember, I put it in my phone. That way I make sure I do remember because I know it's important to her. And that's just how my brain works. Um, and like the wife found out and she was kind of upset about it. And so he was like, am I wrong for this? Um, and a lot of people were like, no, that makes sense. That's what I do too. And so having read that, I have a new perspective on maybe somebody needing to put a reminder in their phone to give their wife a compliment but then to not even give it, not even you're not even giving it to her, Paul. What's the point of the reminder? But I think many would look at that and say, oh, if your spouse isn't growing, if your spouse is not giving what you need and, and is focusing too much on themselves and not making you happy and making your life harder, get out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, but show me where that is biblically, yeah. Christians. We're not like, please, like we're not we do not want to downplay the realities of how hard marriage is sometimes. And like as blessed as our marriage has been, we've had hard times, but I know that other people have had way harder times. Yeah. And so we don't want to downplay that, but, but to say that, Oh, we know it's tough. Like, go ahead and it like that's to downplay the power that God has within a married couple, like within our lives. If we invite the Lord in, even if it's just one of us, even if like Paul was just the worst and I just right. had to <laughs> invite the Lord into our marriage for me, like God would come alongside me and he would give me peace Amen. and joy in contentment and the will and strength to pray for my husband to come back to the Lord. Same, vice versa, if I'm just the worst. <laughs> Dude, you, you better believe he's going to pour out grace. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, my, or was talking what God showed him, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. I have grace that I'm going to bestow on you to continue 
to walk this journey, to continue to walk in obedience. Yeah. Um, and also Jesus, when talking about divorce, he said, like, at the beginning of time, it was appointed that man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. What God has joined together, God is in the covenant of marriage. What God has joined together, let no man or woman separate. Mm-hmm. And we, especially in America, like our elder, the old timer said, <laughs> it was awesome, by the way. <laughs> He said, in America, yeah, I mean, it's, you're going to, you're talking about America, right? Those statistics, half of the the marriages end in divorce. You get in an argument, let's get divorced. Jesus is saying, let no man separate what God has joined together. So the the other couple, Morgan, I heard this uh, a week ago, several days ago, something like that. And I was like, oh, because I had heard this man was a Christian doesn't mean a ton in Hollywood. I don't know this guy's faith walk, mm-hmm. um, but he's this guy's like a staple. Can anyone in the live chat in the comment section, before I say it, guess who it is, or maybe they've heard? But this guy's so I feel like so many people no look idea. up to in the the acting entertainment industry. I'll give you guys three seconds. See if anyone can write it in. Someone said Chris Pratt. Incorrect. Hoping Chris Pratt sticks to his marriage <laughs> yeah, i don't like the idea of guessing <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> Throwing people uh, that, honestly bus. that is a terrible <laughs> just that's tell terrible me. <laughs> just tell um Haley, you got it correct it yes. is hugh jackman so sad um because they oh, have been married for almost 30 years uh hugh and his wife for almost 30 years and here was apparently a mm. uh, just a very brief they've they've kept it um their statements very brief, but it says in an article here, according to celebrity magazine People, the Australian couple said they had been blessed to share almost three decades together. And then in quotes, our journey now is shifting and we have decided to separate to pursue our individual growth. Ding, 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 ding. Wah, wah, wah. There's American culture for you. And we talk about American culture and being in the world. They're not even American. They're Australian. <laughs> but he, I I'm was sure going to say. Rub it off on them. Got an, hadn't had a nice mansion here. <laughs> um, we push back on American culture. We say, be in the world. We're in the world. We're here in America in the world. But we're of the word of God. Hugh Jackman, man, like the word of God says something beautiful and often so almost always so countercultural america is so individualized and they said in that statement to pursue us our personal growth why can't you pursue that's the thing like there's this lie that like oh if you're married you're trapped you can't grow you can only just serve this person that you're with and it's all about them and you don't get to focus on yourself at all I mean that's not true you guys yes it is a lot of laying your life down for one another but in that is growing in that is refinement sanctification looking more like Christ Paul looks very defensive for some reason I'm not sure what it was about what Morgan just said that like and maybe he's he's not feeling defensive, but like he pulled his arms up across his chest. And he's kind of like hugging himself. If you're not watching this, um, it's odd. It's it's an odd stance. Separately, so that when we come together, when we are one, like we are more like Christ as a couple and separately. There has to be personal growth. Oh, I don't know. Morgan, you had a lot of good insight in this video. I appreciated seeing your natural passion come out. And shout out to you. You did pick out this video topic. Can you pick out more topics? So I like how you <laughs> kind of spun it where you like, you said, let's talk about Joe and Sophie. But yeah. then just really open up this conversation. Yes. You did a very good job. Can you do that more often? I'll try. My ideas are far and few between. <laughs> few and far between. Well, it's your job. So. Guys, comment below. I know there are going to be some passionate opinions. There are going to be people who watch this that have gotten divorced. Where are you at with it now, having been divorced? Those of you who maybe are, are hoping to get married one day or soon, what are your thoughts and, and you know how would you maybe reconcile yeah. getting divorced for something other than adultery? Um, let's keep this conversation going. Honestly, if it's on your heart, pray for Joe and Sophie. Joe was at one time a Christian. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, pray for them. Pray for Hugh Jackman, who apparently calls himself a Christian, and his wife. Share this video, you guys. Yeah, help us out. Share the biblical truth. Let's counteract the cultural lies. Love it.
All right, guys, be blessed. We'll see you all again very soon. Have hope. And be free. If you're in the live chat, we'll be right back. Well, that was a lot, and it was quite a mixed bag. We um, we went a lot of different directions and covered a lot of ground. So I'm definitely interested to hear your thoughts after listening to that video from Paul and Morgan. Make sure to leave them in the comment section down below if you are watching on YouTube, or to leave it in the Q&A section if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify. And while you were doing that, if you'd consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would be incredible. And if you are listening to the podcast, if you would consider leaving a rating or a review, view. That would be amazing as well if you have done any of those things already. Thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.